So welcome back to my weekly video series. Uh, no prizes for getting who spent too much time in the sun at the weekend. That was me. So on to today's topic, which is return on capital employed. A couple of people have asked me, have you covered it? And the answer is no. So in this short video, I want to do a beginner's guide to return on capital employed, really key ratio, useful for value investors and one or two other people besides, and just explain what it is, when it's most useful, and one or two of the obvious pitfalls. So I'll give you three good things about it and three things to watch out for, because no ratio is perfect. Right, no more ado, what is Rocky? Return on capital employed. Okay, well, in a nutshell, and I'm gonna keep this a little bit tight with some reference videos at the end for those people who find it short. In a nutshell, it is profit before interest and tax and the profit and loss account over debt and equity capital employed. So it's quite a grand sounding thing. And it's usually expressed as a percentage. So earnings or profit before interest and tax, that for those people who know their profit and loss accounts is a number that appears about two thirds of the way down fairly key number, over debt and equity capital employed. So the contribution from the lenders and the contribution from shareholders. And it's normally given as a percentage. Okay, so we could do a, a very straightforward example, um, just to make sure that um, anyone out there who's used to dealing with different balance sheet formats isn't confused. If you have a balance sheet that has, for example, assets of, let's say, 100 million, in it, liabilities or debt in a UK balance sheet is shown in the top half. Any American viewers out there will realize that theirs are presented a little bit differently, but any debt would be normally deducted in a UK balance sheet. So that would give you net assets of 90 million, let's say funded with shareholder equity, also of 90 million. Your capital employed, take your UK balance sheet, is 100. It's the equity and the debt, or the gross assets figure, if you like, but it's that plus that. So, very simple terms, if the equity capital employed is 100 million, could tuck that in there, it's getting a bit messy now, but don't worry about that, and profit before interest and tax is 10 million, straight from the profit and loss account, 10 million over 100 million as a percentage is 10%. Not particularly difficult maths. Now, it's not the maths I'm too worried about because you can pick this up. It's published all over the place. Journalists wave it around. Rocky's this, Rocky's that. Um, most of you will probably never have to number crunch it per se. All right. What's more important is, is that a useful number and how is it used? Okay. Well, when is it most useful? It is a particularly useful ratio. Some ratios are just profit and loss account. You know, margins, for example, gross margin, operating profit margin. Great, but just profitability. Some ratios are just balance sheet, gearing, for example. Okay, um, focus is just on what's going on in the balance sheet, but this one combines the two. So it's one of only a reasonably small handful of ratios that puts together the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. Okay, so that's his first advantage. It's pretty comprehensive. Secondly, it tries to ask a pretty big question. If you put money into this business, what sort of return do you get out again? Okay, if you put money in as either a debt or equity um, investor, what do you get out again? And 10% by itself, is that high, is that low? Well, you need some more information. How much could you get if you put your money into a bank account, for example? Presumably less. How much if you put it into something very, very risky? Presumably more, okay? So you need comparatives. And um, it does nonetheless try to answer quite a big question, very important one for investors, which is what sort of return am I getting on my capital from investing in this business? When presumably I could be investing in other businesses, or in something completely different altogether. So that's reason number two to have Rocky. Number three, you can do some quite flash stuff with it, which I'll just give you a hint of, called DuPont analysis. Now, if that sounds a bit grand, all that's saying is this, you can break the ratio down, this is one of his advantages, to get even more information out about a business. Now, this is a beginner's guide, so I'm just gonna give you a flavor of how that would work, no more than that. That's better. 
Right, now with DuPont analysis, what you can do is something like this. Quite a neat little trick you can pull with the return on capital employed. Imagine I had a bit more data about this firm, so I had the sales figure. What you can do, mathematically, is split out something like return on capital employed. Don't panic, it's not a big math lecture. So you can say, it can be expressed as P bit over sales times sales over capital employed. All right, because mathematically, don't worry about that bit, if you take sales out, you're back to return on capital employed. Now, why would you want to do that? Just to give you a flavor, imagine same numbers as before for P bit and capital employed. So that was 10 million, that was 100 million, and let's say, making up the sales figure is 50 million. You can put it in both sides, so you can have 50 million there, and you can have 50 million there. Now, why would you want to do all this? Okay, because this all still gives you 10% as an answer if you multiply by 100% at the end, all right? But the point is this, it gives you more information. Because what I'm saying is the P bit margin, 10 over 50 as a percentage, is, 20%, okay, and sales to capital employed, 50 over 100 is 0.5, and half of 20% is 10%. Now you still might be thinking, well, it's clever numbers, why are you doing it, why are you doing it? Well, this is just to illustrate, this is now more information about the same company from one ratio, okay? So what I'm saying is, its margin per sale is 20%, and it turns, if you want to see it this way, its assets into sales at a rate of 0.5, okay? Or put it another way, it generates you know, 50p of sales for every pound of capital employed. So in other words, it's quite high on margin and might be relatively low on sales to capital employed, all right? And that gives you a bit more information about the business, because you start to ask questions like, well, should this be higher? Or should that be higher? Or is it about right for the industry? And so on and so forth. So that's just a flavor of something you can do with return on capital employed that you can't so easily do with other ratios. And it's because it has this uh, comprehensive mix of something from the profit and loss account and something from the balance sheet. Okay, it's just a hint there. And if you'd like me to do a bit more on that, it's called DuPont analysis. I happily will, but in another video. Now, I've said this is a good ratio, and it is a good ratio, but no ratio is perfect. There's no such thing as one magic number and you can just compare Rocky for different businesses and pick the one with the highest and walk away. So let's finish the video with just three things to watch out for if you're using this ratio, you read about it or you see someone mentioning it and suggesting you should buy a share on the back of it. Okay, number one, it's out of date as soon as you look at it. Capital employed is typically taken from the latest balance sheet and balance sheets are typically slightly out of date. Okay, they're published, they're audited, but the information won't be right up to the moment. So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, secondly, it doesn't really give you any feel for scale. What I mean by that is, if I tell you a company's got a return on capital employed of 10%, it could be minuscule, or it could be a massive multinational corporation, and there's no way of knowing. Right? So in other words, a 10% Rocky could translate into P bit of 10 million, or 1 million, or 10p. You just don't really know. So. You, you know, it's useful, it tells you what sort of return you're getting on capital, but you can't go much further than that in terms of the overall size of the business, just comparing Rockies, there's more information that you need to know. And thirdly, it doesn't give you any real sense for risk. I mean, you might think, well, 20 is better than 10, okay, well, clearly, but what sort of risks are involved in getting your 20? So, again, it, it almost asks as many questions as it answers, but used in combination with other ratios, it can be a pretty useful tool. Now, just to wrap up, um, other videos that might be useful, particularly if you're new to this, or even if you're not new and you're thinking, has he done any of this stuff before anywhere? Well, try what is a balance sheet. Okay, if you're worried about the capital employed stuff I talked about, try what is profit, if I was a bit quick on the margin stuff there. I have done a, a, a video called what is return on equity, which sits quite neatly alongside this one. Okay, but a few people did say to me, why haven't you done return on capital employed? So here's my answer, I've done it now. So those two would make uh, sort of quite a neat pairing, okay? So 
those are three videos that may, may be well worth a look in addition to this one. On that note, I look forward to seeing you next week.